All right, so as I've mentioned in another video, a breadboard has a correct side up. So A, B, C, D, E, F, you should be able to read it. A chip has a right side up and the right side up is that this little, uh, this, this little bite out of the chip is, is at the top. So I'm doing this your way and uh, there you go, A, B, C, D, E, F, I can read it and my chip is like this. Uh, the chip sort of looks like this and it's got this little divot at the top. So there you go, there's your little chip. And I'm gonna stick it in the middle of the circuit because as I know, these are terminal strips, they are all connected and these are all connected, but these ones are not connected to these ones. So I'm not shorting this from this. If I put my AND gate chip here, then I'm shorting um, pin, uh, a, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, pin seven and pin eight. So here we go. I'm going to mount it right here. I like it right here. Now to know how to mount, to know how to wire an LED, I simply bring up the pinout. Now the pinout is nothing secret. You can bring out a pinout. All you would have to do is just go on your web browser and say and gate pinout. And you will see that an and gate pinout, it's all the same. Um, and here's an and gate pinout. It says if the notch is here, then this is called pin one, pin two, pin three, four, five, six, seven. And, and um, pin seven goes to ground, pin 14, goes to power and there's an AND gate there, an AND gate there, AND gate there, AND gate there. So let's draw this pin out then. So pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So the pin out is basically your map of how you draw an AND gate. So that's, that's a secret, that's your answer. It says that pin seven is supposed to be mounted to ground and it says that pin 14 is simply supposed to be wired to VCC. So let's do that. Now what I usually do when I'm making any circuit is I make a whole bunch of little jumpers about this size and then I make these tiny jumpers that I call little tiny staples. Now they're very very hard to make. These are very hard to make because they're very very tiny but I like them tiny because I have to mount to pin seven, I have to mount to ground. Well, I want to do that way over here. I want to do it way over here because all it is power and ground pin seven and pin 14 are just powering my chip. So there we go. All I'm doing is powering this chip. This chip is an electronic device. This chip is like your cell phone. If I gave you your cell phone and you did not put a battery in it, then you are not giving it power and ground. So this way I can power the chip. Now I did mount ground to this side, <clears throat> power to this side. I recommend you do that because this is this side of the chip of the breadboard and this is on this side. These pins are on either side of the breadboard. I don't like you. I don't like it when people cross over their chip. I think that's messy. I think it's silly to mount to one side of the bread breadboard only and only power that side. Now we realize that these bus bars down here are not connected to each other. This negative is not connected to this negative. And that's why I have made a nice jumper at the bottom and a nice jumper for positive at the bottom. And these jumpers are gonna stay on my board. I like to keep them there. Now my positives are mounted and my negatives. My positives are connected to these positives. My negatives are connected to these negatives. So there we go. When I connect this to my power supply, then I'm going to connect a positive and a negative, just like that, to my alligator clips on my power supply. And then my chip is ready to do something. It's like I have put a battery inside a cell phone. All right, so the AND gate. I saw from the pinout that, well, first of all, let's talk about what an AND gate is and does. An AND gate is a series of transistors, resistors, and diodes that do a certain logic that we want. 
And if A and B are the inputs of this AND gate, and X is the output, writing upside down here, of an AND gate, then those inputs have a few combinations. They could be one, or they could be zero. They could be on, or they could be off. And so if one is on, B could be off, or B could be on, or A could be off, and so there are a few combinations for that. A and B. A could be off, or A could be on. B could be off when A is off, or on, or off, or on. Power or no power in this situation. And then the output X, we have designed an AND gate, so it performs this logic that we want. The logic that we want in an AND gate is we want power to come out of this circuit. Out here, we want power to come out of this circuit if A and B are on. That's what we designed, that's what we wanted. We want zero in every other case. So I could purchase this chip, it's called the 7404. I purchased it and it was made with a series of transistors and resistors and diodes that actually does that. And it actually does that logic four times. There are four chips in here. It's called a quad and a 7408. It's called a quad AND chip, 7408. So it has one, two, three, four AND gates. If I'm wiring an AND gate, I only need to use one of them. It's pretty typical to use these three. And pin one is an input, pin two is an input, pin three is an output. I can think of these going at in, in, and out. Why? Well, because the pinout says so. The pinout is my guide. Anybody can look up this pinout. It is not a secret. That's how this chip was designed. Now, pin four is an input. Pin five is an input. Pin six is an output of another AND gate, but I don't have to look at that one. Um, and then it, it continues up the other side. Now, I'm going to wire one, two, and three. That's kind of conventionally what we do. So I need an A and a B. Those are inputs. A, B goes into pin one, two. The AND gate is pin one, two, three. So I can bring in this AND gate anywhere on this terminal strip. I like to use the edge. Well, actually I can use close to the pin here and close to the pin. I'm using these in a different color because I think that looks nice and clear. It's easier to troubleshoot when things look nice and clear. Now I have pin one, pin two, pin one, pin two, and pin three is the output of the AND gate. It represents X here. It represents what's gonna happen. So that is pin three, and I'm gonna ignore all the other AND gates. So what I needed to use on this chip is I had to give a voltage, I had to give a ground, and I had to give input, input, output in pin one, two, three. I know this is pin one, two, three because there's a little divot in the chip here, and the divot chip is shown, is shown on the diagram. All right, it's shown actually on the pinout. So pin one, two, three. Now, I want this, this gate to actually do something because how do I know if it's gonna be on or off? Well, you can attach a speaker. You can attach, I don't know, anything to it. I'm gonna attach an LED. And typically in digital circuits, we attach an LED. I have to attach this LED so that the negative is going to be wired to ground and the positive is going to be coming out of of here out of my AND gate the uh, the output i like bending the led like this i don't recommend that you you learn that positive is the long side and negative is the short side because an led should be cut so that it is wired nicely because this video is all about how to wire nicely clean and professional so watch my other video about how to make an led perfectly beautiful like that. So now what I'm gonna do is neaten up my circuit a little bit. And then I'll tell you why I did the elements the way I did. So I'm coming from pin three into my LED. I know that this terminal strip is all electrically connected. There's my LED, my LED has to go to ground. So here we go, I'm gonna take that LED to ground this looks a little long for me, 
because I'm pretty fussy. So I'm going to cut this so that it goes perfectly to ground and lays flat. I'm just gonna strip it a bit more. I'm not strong enough to hold and strip. However, um, that's okay because if you strip your wires by use with using needle nose pliers, then they stay really straight like this. I can tell if you stripped your wires by holding them in your hand that you're strong enough to do that because they don't lay straight. So here we go, I'm bending with, bending nice 90 degrees with my needle nose pliers. Again, needle nose pliers matter and you can't really do that with your fingers. So you should really keep your needle nose pliers as part of your toolkit when you're doing digital circuits. Okay, so now I have my whole circuit made and if I wanna prove this truth table, I can plug in zero, 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 and zero, I have to drive to the negative to represent a zero. With my chip, this 74088 chip that I have here, if I don't drive to zero, if it just has no input at all, it's gonna assume it's getting a one, one. So be very careful about that. So here I am driving to zero by plugging into negative. So those are my inputs, zero, zero, and the light would not turn on. My next row in the truth table is zero, one. So zero, and then I put B into the positive uh, power uh, rail for one. Uh, and then I can do one zero. So I switch this one to one, I switch this one to zero, and the light would not turn on. Now the bottom case here, when it's positive, positive, A and B, one and zero, inputs positive, positive into pin one and pin two, that's when the light would turn on should I be connected to my um, five volt battery supply. How do you know how much voltage to put in? You look at the, at the spec sheet for this. You just Google the spec sheet and say 7408 spec sheet and it would tell you how much voltage you can put in. The answer for this chip is maximum five volts. Now let's talk about what we've done in this circuit to make it beautiful, to make it wonderful to make it uh, better than a rat's nest because we leave rat's nests to the rats. So in this AND gate circuit, I can easily troubleshoot it because I didn't use a lot of wires. I don't have any wires crossing over my AND gate. I have taken my, my uh, power and ground from pin, seven, pin 14 and seven out of the prime real estate of the circuit. I'm gonna leave those on, bo on the board for previous circuits and I have my out inputs clearly marked and a little bit larger because I have to switch them from positive to negative to do my inputs. I know that I don't have to do anything with this output so I have it nice and flat on the board and going into my LED. We have talked about how the flat side of the LED is the negative and that is what gets wired to negative. We talked about connecting these power strips to these power strips so that you can bring in your power, just one positive on this side, one negative on this side, and be able to power all the way across. We wire the right-hand side to the right-hand side of the board, left-hand side to the left-hand side of the board. The other thing we talked about is having the breadboard upright, which means A, B, C, D, E, F is leg legible, not upside down, and the chip being upright, meaning that it's got this little divot at the top so that it corresponds perfectly with our spec sheet and we can read uh, which pin is supposed to be which. So this has been a circuit where we, we use pin one, two, three for input, input, output of a um, quad, a 7408 quad um, and gate integrated circuit using an LED to show if the output works or not. And I hope that's pretty simple for you. Now let's talk about the OR gate. If I wanted to wire an OR gate, I would turn this, I would take this out and I would put the OR gate chip in. That's it. Because I know from looking up the circuit diag or the um, pinout of an OR gate, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I know that it says this has to go to power and I know that it says that this has to go to ground. 
and I know that it says in, in, or symbol, out. Then there's another in, in, out. There's another one and another one. There, are, It's a quad or gate, uh, 7432. And uh, that one, it's got the same pin out, pin one, two, three, in, in, out. So now I can do my or, uh, my OR gate exactly the same way. This is now wired for an OR gate, in which case I would expect the answer of an OR gate to be same inputs and the, ans and the output for an OR gate is one or the other or both is our OR gate. Now, if I were to wire a, um, a NOT gate, then I will see that the pinout is a little bit different. So this is OR. The pinout for a NOT gate has the same number of pins, but it actually has six NOT gates in it. You'll see that pin one and two go through a NOT gate. So whatever you put into pin one comes out of pin two. If I put a one in, it'll come out as a zero. If I put a zero in, it'll come out as a one. So there's actually six little NOT gates sitting in here. And we typically like to pin to wire up pin one and two. Uh, same thing, pin 14 is voltage. Pin seven is ground. So now I put my knot gate in there and it's a simple matter. It's a simple matter of looking at my new pin out and saying, what has to change? I still need to power it here. I still need to have my jumpers across there. I still need an LED to tell me the result. I still need to have power and ground on this chip because it's a chip, it's an electronic device. I look at my new pinout and it says in one, out two. So here I go in pin one I already had, but in this case I have to come out pin two. So I need to move up one here. One disadvantage of cutting your wires purpose built is that you do have to move things. So here I am moving up one. So now I have come in pin one. I'm giving it a one right now. So a zero will come out and this will not light up. If I give it a, a zero, then it goes in pin one, out pin two, and this would light up should I be connected to my five volt battery supply. And then out to ground. So that's how we wire an AND gate, an OR gate, and a NOT gate on our breadboard and use really nice workmanship to show our skills at the same time.